5 seconds to go. Start. It dissolves mentioned here that it is not even disputed that the petitioner has not paid any rent after filing of the eviction petition before the rent authority. Before the appellate authority also, no rent was paid or deposited by the petitioner. Before this court also, the matter has been pending for about two years, but no rent has been paid or deposited by the petitioner. Hence, during the entire period of litigation, the petitioner has been occupying the premises without payment of any rent. Before proceeding further with the arguments, this court had asked the petitioner whether he was ready to pay the rent and its arrears to retain the premises. The counsel for the petitioner had sought time to get instructions in this regard. However, on the next date of hearing, the counsel for the petitioner submitted that he has the instructions to say that the petitioner is not in a position to pay any rent because the petitioner has gone bankrupt. These facts and the assertions by the petitioner itself disentitle him to continue in possession of the premises in question for even a single minute and the petitioner is liable to be evicted from the premises with immediate effect. However, since the petitioner has raised certain legal questions, therefore, it is appropriate that this court considers the same and then decide the matter. Arguing the case, counsel for the petitioner tenant has submitted that both the courts below have gone wrong in law in dismissing his application for rejection of the eviction petition filed by the landlord as not maintainable as per the mandate of section 22 of the act. It is submitted by the counsel that the act prescribes a mandatory condition of giving notice by the landlord to the tenant in the prescribed format as given in schedule to the act. If the same is not complied with, then as per subsection 1 of section 20 of the act, the rent authority was restrained from passing any order of recovery or decree for possession of the demised premises. Hence, the condition of the issuance of notice is mandatory for maintaining the eviction petition. Therefore, this was a duty cast upon the respondent landlord to comply with this provision. Council has further submitted that the agreement claimed by the respondent landlord is in writing. Therefore, the same was required to be registered as per section 4 of the Act. Since the agreement has not been registered, therefore, the same is not admissible in evidence as per section 49 of the Registration Act 1860. Since section 4 of the Act starts with non obstant clause, therefore, neither such an agreement has any legal value nor can the same be led in evidence by the respondent landlord. Council has further submitted that during pendency of the petition, the landlord had discontinued the facilities available to the petitioner tenant which is against the mandate of section 19 of the act which prescribes that even if there is a default on the part of the tenant, landlord could not have discontinued or disconnected the amenities available to the tenant. Council for the petitioner has further submitted that the appellate authority mainly has gone by the fact that the petitioner has admitted the pleadings raised by the respondent landlord in the eviction petition. However, this conclusion of the courts below is wrong. The petitioner denies having admitted any pleadings raised by the respondent landlord in the eviction petition. Even if the pleadings are taken as admitted, the rent authority would still have to assess the pleadings of the parties for arriving at a final decision. Hence, the issues were rightly framed by the rent authority. The appellate authority has wrongly set aside the order of framing of issues. Still further, the court below has wrongly assumed the service of notice upon the petitioner by virtue of the fact that the petitioner continued the default in payment of the rent even after filing of the petition. In such a scenario, section 25 of the act 
shall come into play. The court below could have allowed the arrears of rent with statutory interest even for the period during pendency of the petition. However, non payment of rent during pendency of the eviction petition or during the pendency of the appeal is not a ground sufficient to order eviction of a tenant. Hence, the order passed by the courts below are wrong. On the other hand, counsel for the respondent landlord has referred to the pleadings of the parties. He had submitted that after payment of rent for some months, the petitioner defaulted in its payment. In the first instance, oral notice was given to the petitioner to pay the rent. Thereafter, he paid the rent for some months, but again defaulted in payment. Stop.